Good day everyone, welcome to the round table of the Philip Talk Committee. My name is Mara Clara and I am the committee secretary as well as your moderator for today. I'm delighted that we're finally completed and in this meeting we will attempt to study and discuss the two poems by Luis G. Dato, a well-known Filipino poet who was one of the first Filipinos to write and publish works in English. Bonjour, literary artists! Thank you once again for attending today's meeting. And to start off, let us take a look at the short video of the poem that we will be discussing today. Roll VTR! Malolos by Luis G. Dato The town is quiet, the house is still, and dark the house of God. The heroes slumber up the hill, and in my heart their blood. Again I see a gay procession, and men in bright attire. A hundred of delegates in session, and soldiers in the mire. Malolos, once you rent the thunder, and now that we've finished watching the poems, let's go on to the next round. Why don't we start with the profiling or biographical sketch of this Filipino poet who wrote the poems Malolos and the Among the Hills. Who is Luis G. Dato? Alright, thank you so much Mara. Um, Luis G. Dato was a professor of English and a journalist, acknowledged as an authority of language and culture of the Bicol region in southern Luzon. He authored several volumes of poetry, among them are Manila, a collection of verses, and the land of my a Philippine ethnic. Um, I'd like to add something about Luis G. Dato. One of the characteristics of his poem is that most of them are written in traditional or conventional poetry that is with meter or rhyme or both. He has written sample verse. Being one of the first Filipino poets to write in this medium, he has written what is probably the longest sonnet sequence in the Philippines, numbering nearly 200 sonnets. He was also the first Filipino to translate results Mi o Temo Adios. Wow, fantastic! He's famous, I suppose, because of what you just mentioned earlier. He's not just a poet, he's not just a literary artist, not just a writer, but also a translator. Wow, fantastic! Let's take a look at the first poem entitled Malolos. What is the poem's overall message and what is the poem's context? The Malolos poem by Luis G. Dato pictures the inauguration of the first revolutionary congress at the Barasawin Church in Malolos. Because of their will to attain freedom, Filipinos opted to create a congress led by appointed delegates. On September 15, 1898, the Malolos Congress was introduced with 85 representatives who were smart, had the opportunity to study, and were from a well-to-do family. Led by Felipe G. Calderon, the representatives drafted the Malolos Constitution, which was the first Republican constitution in Asia. The constitution established a democratic constitution with three branches, executive, legislative, and judiciary, and called for separation of church and state. The first inauguration of the Philippine Republic on January 21, 1899, and Emilio Aguinaldo was proclaimed as its first president. Now that we've covered the backdrop, let's go deeper into the analysis of the poem itself. Let's take a look at the poem's first stanza. The town is quiet, the houses are still, and the dark the house of God. The heroes slumber up the hill, and their blood is in my heart. The peace after war that they have fought was accomplished after then, and it was discussed on the first stanza. The town is quiet, and the house of God are still dark, and the houses are still standing. This symbolizes how they fought the battles and remembering how soldiers fought for their freedom. 
The spectacular parade of the delegates and soldiers is described in the second stanza, where the altar of the church was dropped for the assembly. General Aguinaldo convoked the assembly into the opening session. He urged the delegates to firmly lay a constitution that would be the most glorious expression of the noble asseveration of the Filipino people. As the delegates converged at Malagos, they made it evident that they wished to enact a constitution and is to establish a permanent government for the country, a proof that the Filipinos already had the capacity to govern it and mark it as their stanzas. Okay, let's talk about the poet's tone, attitude, and the mood. And what do you think the poet was thinking when he wrote this poem? And what are its effects? I think the tone of the poem Malolos is serious and formal since the poem is all about what happened before in Malolos like how soldiers sacrifice their lives for freedom. Well, when it comes to mood and attitude, it expresses deep consideration and care to his fellow men who will enter the war. At the same time, it is proud and delighted because despite of the prior poor experiences of the Filipino people. That's all. After reading the poem, it made me realize that I should really be thankful for those people behind the freedom that we are experiencing right now. For without them, the Philippines wouldn't be the same. How about the poet's use of symbolism, imagery, literary devices used, and even the structure of the poem? Now what is the structure? The poem is made up of four stanzas and each stanza has its four lines also. The lines were free-flowing, meaning that there was no specific number of syllables. Well, and there are a lot of literary devices that was observed. Number one is the metaphor. It suggests meaning to the reader in an easy-to-understand way complex rather than focus on one point of comparison. There are many different forms of metaphor and they are used to make the reader think deeply. So on the poem, there is a, a statement that says, The heroes slumber up the hill, and in my heart, their blood. That was one of the metaphor. Another one is the meton metonymy. It's a figure of speech which one word or phrase is substitute for another that is closely related to it. Also, the rhetorical strategy of indirectly describing something by referring to things around it. Those are the literary devices that was observed. And in the poem, when the poet says, Malolos, once you meant a sender, it indirectly describes that Malolos was once separated and downgraded. Alright, to wrap up the first poem entitled Malolos by Luis G. Dato, this poem from 1898 depicts the first Revolutionary Congress inauguration at the Barcelona Church in Malolos. We discovered that the poem describes the dazzling march of delegates and soldiers and that the poem provides evidence or proof that the Filipinos already had the capacity to govern as evidenced by the poem's last, last stanza and that the poet employs a variety of literary strategies to create a distinct and profound poem about Malolos. Wow, regarding the first poem, we had a very interesting conversation. But hold on, there's more to come. We'll now go to the second work of literature of Luis G. Dato. And without further ado, let us begin our analysis of the poetry Among the Hills. Among the Hills by Luis G. Dato I used to watch the sunrise glow That set a flame in the eastern skies My lips and songs did freely flow As thoughts went fitting with my sighs I live through storm and smiles and tears And seen familiar faces die Ah, this my weary youthful years are fought with sheets and dreams gone by. And yet when once again I see the glory of the purple hills, my dying heart revives to me, a spring of love and lover's dreams. My mind in youth did ever roam across the mountains in the days, and now my heart has found a home among the eastern hills and veins. So 
the first question is what do you think the poem's context and overall message seem to be? Any of you can answer this question. The poem has been introduced to us with the perspective of the situation is currently. It shows how the poem revolves around the man like what his adulthood looks like and how he overcome the storm in his life. And in the poem, there was two lines that said, And now my heart has found a home among the eastern hills in Vegas. Meaning if you've ever gone to a place where there are mountains, you've seen plenty of mountain range, mountain tops and valleys. Valleys are the, the low points between hills and they are also known as fields. If you climb a mountain, you'll see many views which are often long and wide. So with the help of, of the hills and hills, he found an area that he could see as a home or he could, he could feel as a home. Wow, that's interesting. We'll undoubtedly learn something new as we progress through the technical aspects of the poem. What can you tell about the poem based on its structures, specifically the first and second stanza? I'd like to emphasize the first and second stanza, but it really depends on how you will interpret this one. Based on my understanding, this is about how you make able to smile and see a better view despite on what you've been through. It is something that no matter how dark it is, no matter how hard a storm is, the storm symbolizes your trial, your challenges. It reminds yourself that it's okay to cry and just look for a better perspective to keep going. The last two stanzas reflect like a bit that finally the life that was thought it was dead, the life it was thought it was wounded, the life it was thought it was lifeless has become alive, has become finally it made a birth and that happened among the years. Awesome! The poetry is truly profound and it inspires me to learn more about it. So let's discuss about the poet's tone, attitude and mood and what do you think the poet was thinking when he wrote this poem? And what are its effects? The tone of the poem is sorrowful. Words were heavy. Moreover, the attitude of the writer screams dedication. I can say it through the story of the poem itself. The writer experienced his down point. However, he did not give up and so he was able to rise up. As for the mood, yes, it can't be denied that overall, the piece is sad. The reasons and effects behind this poem is that it inspires us to keep moving forward despite the struggle we are facing right now. Just like the writer, he lost his loved ones but still, he keep moving forward and now he found his new home. The effects, it shows how the writers overcome all the struggles in his life. Precisely, what about the poet's use of symbolism, imagery, literary devices, and even the structure in the poem? Symbolism in poetry is used to express one's thoughts gracefully, but gentle as well. It is a reflection in, of our emotions written artistically to keep readers engaged as they embark on the journey inside the poet's complex life. In the poem, I think it symbolizes freedom and how you overcome challenges in your life. The glory of purple and hills, it symbolizes a better view on your situation or how hard is your situation is. And the storms, it symbolizes your problem, challenges, and trials that you have been experienced. And the home, it symbolizes new peace that you're looking despite on the challenges that you've been experiencing. What is the structure? The poem is made up of four stanzas and each stanza has four lines as well. The lines were free-flowing, meaning that there was no specific number of syllables. Here are the imagery that can be extracted from the poem. Sense of sight. We have the lines, I used to watch the sunrise glow and I see the glory of the purpling hills. Sense of hearing. My lips in songs did freely flow. There are two literary devices used in this poem. First is hyperbole. Hyperbole is the use of over-exaggeration to create or emphasize humor. Example, my dying heart reminds to me. 
The second one is personification. Personification is a poetic device where animals and plants or even inanimate objects are given human qualities or resulting in a poem full of imagery and description. Example of this is my mind and youth did ever live. Alright, to conclude the second poem entitled Among the Hills, the poem's title already reveals what the poem is about. It is a memoir of the author's life experiences, how the author deals with the challenges that life throws at him. It also depicts the man's character over the course of his life's difficulties. It indicates how the poem revolves around the man and how he looks in adulthood having been introduced to us with the perspectives of what situation the area is currently in. And that ends our today's roundtable discussion. We'll see you on the next episode of Feel the Talks. Once again, I am Mara Clara. Thanks for listening. Have a nice day ahead.